Hello friends and welcome to Valdez, Alaska. My husband Mark and I made the five hour drive from our home in Anchorage to Valdez and arrived last night in the dark. Over the next few days we are going to explore what Valdez has to offer. For reference this video is filmed in late August and it is silver and pink salmon season in Valdez so it is a great time to visit and we can't wait to show you some of the things that Valdez has to offer. Good morning friends. This is our little chalet behind me that we checked into last night. We got two bedrooms, two bathrooms in there, a little tiny kitchen. We're about to head into Valdez. Okay, this morning we are at the Valdez Convention Center. This is where Mark's uh, convention is being held. It is extremely foggy. Hopefully we'll be able to get some good sights today. We're going with Keystone Tours. We're gonna go see all the things. It says waterfalls, glaciers, wildlife. I'm excited to see what Valdez has to offer. Okay, so it was super, super foggy. We were driving up in the fog. I thought, oh, we're not going to get to see the beautiful Thompson Pass. And then we came out into the sunshine above the fog, and it's gorgeous. Look at these beautiful fireweed turned red. So this is Worthington Glacier here. I'm sure, it's gorgeous. So this is where we drove in yesterday, but it was sunset. It's nice to see it in the sunshine now. How gorgeous. Actually, it's like 360 panorama. Wow, wow, wow. This makes me wish we had come earlier yesterday just so we could hike and explore. It's just so gorgeous. It's supposed to start raining tomorrow, like two inches of rain. So we're really trying to just soak this all in. Wow, Worthington Glacier. So Valdez is actually a headquarters for heli skiing. So once winter hits, it turns into a heli skiing paradise. People love coming up here, helicopters going off all the time into these mountains so people can ski. I'm not sure which of the mountains, probably all of these, but that is a huge boon for Valdez in the winter time to um, have to have people come and do their heli skiing tours. And then our tour guide said that during this time of year, they just rent out the little huts to like construction workers that are here for the summer. But winter time is hella skiing in Valdez. Okay, we now pulled into the Worthington Glacier like visitor center area. You can feel the cold coming off the glacier and now you can see some waterfalls. So this is a fun place to stop bunch of water flowing down and that in the middle is still the glacier it just is all the rocks that have broken off covering up the glacier and then you see the ice on either side and then there's a hanging glacier just beautiful there's a little thing about ice worms that live in the glaciers face only a mother could love Oop, I'm, I've, my shadow is covering that. It smells like waffle cone as I'm walking through here, which is really strange. <laughs> but man, it is just gorgeous. I'm just pinching myself that we got such a nice day before the rain comes. Glad they scheduled the tour for today. 
I didn't even, like, when we were looking at it from far back, I didn't realize they had all these waterfalls. There's just this specific feeling when you're near a glacier and the wind is blowing off the glacier. Just this like perfect crispness in the air that I've only ever felt when I'm near a glacier. It's hard to explain, but I'm feeling that right now. I'm glad we got to see this from far away because it's actually a little bit more spectacular from far away, but then you get to see different aspects of it close up here and then the river running off. Worthington Glacier. In addition to heli skiing or helicopter skiing here in Valdez, there, because they have so much snow for so long up here in the valley, there's a lot of snow machining or snowmobiling, lots of competitions and things like that. It's a big snow machine area as well. Lots of people mispronounce the name of Valdez. They say Valdez, but I was just talking to a local. She said the best way to remember it is Valdez like the breeze because you get an ocean breeze. Oh, we got a little fireweed here that hasn't gone red. I feel like I spelt the first fireweed I've seen all summer this year. So pretty. Hello, long lost friend. It's funny because just like a mile, two miles up the road, it already turned red, no flowers. But right here in this shadow, so pretty. So yesterday we were talking about Thompson Pass and gold and it was say, it says that it was just so treacherous to be trekking through here in the winter. They can get up to five feet of snow in one day and 81 feet in a year. And you're above tree line, so there's like no shelter. Crazy. The thing that always comes to mind when I think about gold rush times is people really thought they were going to strike it rich because they the things they went through. Crazy. All right, this is where we stopped last night, where you can see down, you can see the fog now that we drove through. Hopefully it will continue to burn off because there's lots of waterfalls down there we're gonna go stop and look at in Keystone Canyon and like to have some sunshine down there. Pretty cool to be up above the fog clouds and hike way out on these trails and see. Okay, we are now down in Keystone Canyon where you start to get beautiful waterfalls. Look at that. So that last 
waterfall was Bridal Veil Falls. I feel like everywhere you go that has waterfalls will have a Bridal Veil Falls. And now we have Horsetail Falls. There's a bear. If you could smell it. We are at the tidal flats and there are dead fish everywhere. These fish have spawned and died. Probably pink salmon. Ooh. But the real exciting thing is on the other side, there is a little black bear looking for fish in this stream. Oh my gosh, so many dead fish. Doesn't even have to be a very good fisherman. There's so many fish. Oh, there he is. It's a little guy. Yeah. He's like a little dog. Huh? <laughs> Just gonna eat his favorite parts and then go for another one. We've now made our way over to the Solomon Gulch Fish Hatchery. It is very stinky here too. It's low tide. Uh, hi. I, usually you can see some sea lions here, but I'm not sure because it's low tide if we'll be able to see them. But man, that dead fish smell is strong. The Solomon Gulch Fish Hatchery is the largest pink salmon hatchery in North America. Its mission is to ensure sufficient numbers of wild salmon return each year to increase the harvest for both sport and commercial fisheries in the Valdez area. The facility is permitted to incubate, rear, and release 270 million pink salmon and 2 million coho salmon every year. The best time to view the returning salmon at the hatchery is July through October. Free self-guided tours are available along the hatchery walkway May through October. The self-guided tour is open at all times unless there is a bear activity along the walkway. This is a great opportunity to view the fish ladder and learn the history and economic benefits of the hatchery, as well as learning about the different types of salmon and the life cycles that they go through. They have lots of interpretive displays and panels and videos to help you understand what you're looking at. So hatcheries like this are very important to the fishing industry. It allows a lot of fish to be taken care of, come back and spawn here so that they can then put more fish out in the ocean and support the fishing industry and not leave it up to chance. It gives the baby fish a very safe place to grow and then this fish ladder here gives them a safe place to come back and spawn. So great part of the fishing industry here in Alaska. But man, is it stinky. This fish hatchery only has pink salmon and silver salmon. The pink salmon come back earlier and the silvers come back later. Valdez does have the other species of salmon, but not here from the hatchery. Our tour for the day ended at the Growler Bay Brewing Company for a taste testing. I don't drink alcohol and I'm also pregnant with twins, so I opted for a fresh brewed root beer and then we got to enjoy some lunch from the Love's Kitchen food truck. It was very tasty. Well friends, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Mark made it out of his meetings and the fog is finally lifting. 
got a little sunshine here. Starting to be able to see the mountains around Valdez. And I had Mark stop so we could see this fun sign. He wants to head back over to the fish hatchery um, that I went to earlier today. It's supposed to be high tide, about two hours, so there should be a lot more water and maybe we can see some sea lions. Okay, the fog has continued to lift. You can now see some of the mountains out here and it is definitely higher tide. Earlier today, all this was mud flats and seagulls. Let's go see if we can see some sea lions. The smell is still Okay, you can see the backs of just thousands of fish. Let's go look at those sea lions. And then there's oh, sea lions. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, let's go check it out. Salmon's in shorts. Oh, it's the pungent smell. Wow, those, oh, I just stepped on a carcass. Those, oh, it smells, huh? Look at the sea lions right there. Four big ones. Oh wow, that smell is strong. So we got four sea lions here, and then there's some harbor seals. And then all these dark areas are just the backs of fish. It's incredible. Looks like the sea lions are taking a little break. These salmon are just, wow, just churning. Churning. Oh my goodness. I like, I want to walk. Oh but... yeah, there's nasty. Oh, it's just like... Okay. Uh... Will you tell me those numbers that you said earlier? Oh my goodness, it smells so bad. <laughs> so at this hatchery here, they take pink salmon and they grow 230 million baby pink salmon smolt and 10 million coho or silver salmon smolt. And then uh, they say that they get a return of 10 million pink salmon and 200,000 silver salmon back here into this area, which are for sport fishing and commercial fishing. Oh, he's that eating one's that one. eating a salmon. He's ripping it up. There's another just napping there. Yeah. yeah. Addy. Oh, another. oh, there's another one. Oh my goodness. It's just like a conveyor belt of food, just like bringing it right to their mouth. Kind of like those, uh, Jet conveyor belt sushi bars. <laughs> All you can eat. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. That one's just like, maybe he's comatose, he ate too many. <laughs> he's crazy. Oh my goodness. We are going past the hatchery now. And there are just so many cars. People are out here fishing for silver salmon. Probably catching a lot of pink salmon. Alaskans prefer silvers over pinks. For the most. <laughs> Lots of people out fishing. All right, let's see if we string up a pole. Right there. Look at all those. I can see fish over there, yeah. but well, maybe I should rig up my rod and give it a couple casts. Mark came semi-prepared. It's not sure he has the right stuff, but he did bring a fishing pole and some tackle. So it's interesting this water here. When we are at our cabin it's very gradual out into the bay but this fjord here is super deep super fast like 100 feet off shore it's like 300 feet deep which is totally different fishing conditions than we're used to by our cabin it's just a very deep fjord mark was here a few months ago and went out on a boat and it just got so deep so fast they didn't know where to halibut fish because where we halibut fish it's usually around 150 feet much deeper here but 
there is good halibut fishing somewhere. You just got to know where to go. I guess there is a fishing derby going right now, and the top halibut right now is like 380 pounds, which is just incredibly huge. We only had 30 minutes for Mark to try and catch a fish, but he did enjoy wetting his line and seeing if he could catch one. He didn't catch one this time, but it was still nice to be outside and enjoy this beautiful view. Okay, we're back by the spot from earlier today. Now there's two bears fishing, two black bears. I don't know if you can see them up there. One's about to go into the woods. They're little. Yeah, they are little. It's a pretty cool thing. You can just drive up and have bears right here next to the road. Just amazing how fast they disappear into the woods. Now we got three bears. One, two, and then there's three over there. Just, these are small here in front of us. Wow. This gentleman in the RV behind me, he must stay here a bunch. He watches these bears all the time. He said that this young bear here in front of us every day comes up and walks right here, right where I'm standing, and crosses the road. So, took a few steps back. Pretty cool. What a unique experience here. We got these bears back there, it's so cool. What a cool little semi-urban experience. Yeah, it's on. That was so, so cool to see three, three bears at the same time, just right here behind us. They disappear so fast into the brush, though, when, you, yeah. when they do go up. Yeah, they do. These obviously are not that afraid of humans. No. Yeah, I can see all three right now again. Cool. Oh my goodness, there's, there's a, big... a bear crossing the road over here. We got bears behind Lauren. There's one crossing the road. And then a in front big of one us. right up here in front of us. This is so cool. That that's a bigger one. That's a big bear. Yeah, that one's a big one. That's a big bear. Here you go, hon. I know, there's one over here. Wow. This one's a big one. So four different black bears. Just disappears into the brush. You want to see black bears, Valdez, during pink and silver season. Looks like a good place. Four bears. We've made our way down to the Valdez Harbor. 
Valdez is a fishing town, obviously. We're here down on the ocean. A lot of people from the interior will come to Valdez rather than going all the way to like Seward or Homer because that's a lot farther. So if you're from Fairbanks or up in the interior, Valdez is often where they come to fish. There's also, Mark said there's shrimp pretty close. We don't have shrimp in Kachemak Bay where we go fishing, but here you can get them pretty close. And then halibut, salmon. What else do people Rock fish for? Fish, Rockfish? Ling cod, regular cod, and the salmon sharks some people go after. So walking along it looks like there's a bunch of people right up here that caught a bunch of fish. We'll go see what they caught. Is there are lots of good glacier viewing tours from here as well. There's a big glacier nearby that you can go to, but I don't know if I've heard of much whale watching here. Oh my goodness, a lot of fish here. Oh, the silvers. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at all those silvers. All the fish cuts here. Residents of Alaska and visitors alike need to purchase a fishing license to go fishing for any species of fish in Alaska, anybody 18 and above. There are limits to the number of different species that you can catch, so you need to make sure you check the regulations if you come and want to fish. We stopped and talked to a visitor who had rented a boat and took his family fishing and had great luck catching silver salmon and halibut. If you don't feel comfortable handling a boat, there are lots of charters ready to take you out to where the fish are. Here's the fishing derby leaderboard. 316 pounds is the top halibut. 116? 153 is second place for this week. 252 is the second place for the overall. So it was caught in week nine. Wow, from Tennessee. How, how long does it go for? Like Memorial Day, maybe? Wow. And a 10 pound halibut. These are big silvers, too. A 14, 14, 14 pound five. halibut. Wow. Fun. I guess the prize for the biggest halibut is $10,000. It turned into a beautiful day in Valdez. Glad we could see it in the sunshine. <sighs> Exploring Alaska is fun. Water's clearer here than it is across the bay. I don't have my jacket, so I'm hanging out in the car, but Mark called me. He caught a fish. Fish. Success. There you go. It's a nice silver. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I gotta find someone to find someone to give it to. <laughs> I'm sure, there'll be somebody. All right. Want a picture? Sure. We are not really set up to take a salmon home. Mark just gifted it to. There's a couple from Missouri that are up here visiting their daughter. So they were really excited to have yeah. a fresh, big silver salmon. It was for... a beautiful silver. Oh, so, yeah. Passing on the goodness. And Mark got to catch a fish. We got an Alaskan traffic jam here. We got a brown bear on the side of the road. Oh, that's a good sized brown bear. Oh, you just sit and watch in the traffic. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> you out there eating berries or something? disappeared into the brush. Alaskan traffic jam. 
is sure cute just sitting there on its bum. Too bad that big truck honked because it scared it off. Wow, I can't tell you the last time I saw five or six bears in a day. Well, as predicted, we woke up to a very rainy day here in Valdez. The clouds are all the way down to the water. Not sure there's gonna be much to see today, but there are some museums and things that I think I could go check out. Maybe the grocery store. Right now we're going to get breakfast. This conference provides breakfast, lunch, and dinner pretty much every day. So we're taking advantage of that instead of buying a bunch of food and cooking it. Can't even see across the bay. Fish hatcheries on the other side. Well, you can kind of, no, that's just clouds. There's no, <laughs> can't, can't see anything. See, yeah, can't see the terminal, the boat, anything. Okay, time to get some gas at Captain Joe's Gas here in Valdez. Um, we've driven about 350 miles since we left home and the price is 509 okay all right going to cost to fill up for 509 i think we got to just fill the whole thing up we're not going to stop on the way home and 57 dollars fill up all right off to the next adventure so we are headed out towards the airport it's interesting to note that Valdez does not have a big airport it doesn't have a big runway so only small airplanes can fly in here now there is a company called Raven Air that flies in daily if the weather is cooperating if it's not they just cancel the flights so you have to come in on a smaller airplane, no big jets coming in, which makes things tricky for like transporting stuff. So things, you know, have to come in by ship or small airplane or road. And it's a long ways. We mentioned earlier that Mark thought about flying us in his small airplane, but this weather right now with the fog all the way down to the ground is what we were afraid of. We would be stuck here and we wouldn't have had a car to drive around. So I think we made the right choice. Is that the tower? That's the tower, the control station. You can see there's like two or three planes, that's it. This is a little bit of a air, airport. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they get turbo prop planes, yeah. but you can't do any type of instrument approaches or anything because you got these all, it's ringed by mountains on all sides. So they have to be able to see what they're doing to come in. Yeah. for hella skiing and tours. We are gonna continue driving past the airport. There is a glacier out this way that has a big glacial lake in front of it. You can rent kayaks and paddle around. We're not sure what we're gonna be able to see. So we're gonna go out today and if even in this crummy weather you can see things, then we're gonna rent a kayak, a double kayak for tomorrow to go paddle around. But if they just can't see anything, then we'll know it's not worth it. Cause they have to like deliver the kayak out and you can paddle around for a couple hours and then they pick up the kayaks. So we're gonna see what it looks like. Oh, so I was gonna my boots, what but... we can see looks pretty awesome here. Change into my rain boots. Thank you. Glacier View Park. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, right away. I mean, you can see all the ice. People out here doing stuff. Cool. So there's numerous tour groups that will take you out kayaking or paddling on the lake. You can also do a do-it-yourself adventure, which maybe we'll be able to do tomorrow. I don't know where the active glacier is, is it? can't quite see. Is it up and around to the left? There's a lot of ice here. Huh. These are big chunks of ice out here. Some of them have rocks on top of them. It is very foggy. Wow, they usually sell 
sell those ones um, down in southeast Alaska and around coastal BC. Yeah. And then the, the Clinkett and Haida will do tours in them. Sure. Oh. Okay, so the glacier is about two miles that way. And then these are all fleet free floating icebergs. So Mark was chatting with a guide. He said like 2017 it receded a little bit, but you could still see it from here. And then 2018 it received a little bit more. What year did he say the? Uh, 2019 20 or 2018? No, 2019. 2019 or 2020, the huge ice shelf broke off and they lost a mile in a day. Like it pushed back a mile. So now it's a couple miles around the corner, but still looks pretty cool. All these floating icebergs and just being able to walk out here. Also kind of bizarre because we feel like we're in the wilderness, but we can hear they have a quarry right over here in there getting rock for the highway project and other stuff they got going on. And it's so clear. Fish out a chunk over there. It looks like the wind blew it. Take it home and put it in our drink. <laughs> looks like crystal. It's, it's funny so shapes too. Clear. Holy cow. It is just like ice at home doesn't look like that. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Why is it so clear? I don't know. Amazing. How many tens of thousands of years old is that ice too? I don't know. That's Just amazing. dripping in your hand, but Wow. So cool. Let's see if I can grab the other chunk. There's the river flowing out. Oh, it's myself dirty. I don't know, I think that's still attached. Oh, I got a chunk. Where'd it go? I'm gonna get my own chunk of ice. <laughs> get a little cooler. Cooler's back up there. Oh, there was some over there. Uh, there we go. My wow. own glacial ice. Wow. It's amazing. It's so pretty. Sweet. If we had a cooler. Yeah. It's so dense and yeah, you can really see the light coming through it. Yeah. Burr. <laughs> so cool. It's got a lot of glacial silt on it too. <laughs> you need some fresh water to rinse it off and then... I feel healthier already. <laughs> yeah. Hmm river over here. Oh, it's cold. I mm -hmm. feel, the... feel that cold air coming up. That's a chunk of ice yeah, right it's like there. A chunk trying to flow out. You can see some other chunks there are getting kind of hung up before they make it out. Also interesting all these like this is definitely a different rock than that right there and traveled with the glacier transported. Very cool place to come and just walk around even if you don't rent a boat very very cool glacier water is so milky and silty because of all that rock that it grinds up and it's such a contrast to this ice I just like can't get over it it looks like a sculpture of oh, course cool. Sure, that would be a good. Okay, let's move this yeah. back a little bit. You just take it off. There you go. I feel like it's like a sculpture. You don't want to break it. I know. It's just it's so pretty. Taking so many thousands of years, to crush in an instant. Although I know if our boys were here, they'd be all over that. <laughs> they would. I was looking at this outfitter that was about to take a big group out. It looked like they provided good rain gear. They had little pogies on the paddle so your hands would stay warm. This is very typical Valdez weather. So if you ever find yourself in Valdez, just bundle up and 
come do things like this. We're just not sure if we have the time for it because of the conference that we're at, but even in this weather, that would be really amazing to explore. And in the very least, coming to look is definitely worth it because that was really cool. Wow. We are headed home today. On my way out, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of our KOA campground chalet that we've been staying at. It has two bedrooms. So that was bedroom number one, bedroom number two here, where we stayed. It did have a cute little balcony that's covered, so you can enjoy it even in the rain. Got a closet. And then bathroom number one with a shower. Just simple. Cute little sleeping bear. Okay, down the hallway here was a second bathroom, which is nice. So, bathroom and then it had a shower on this side. Okay, a little kitchen that we never used, but it did have you know, a refrigerator and sink and stuff in the pantry to, you know, use. And then a little living room where we did end up watching a movie, which we haven't done together in a long time, so that was fun. Let's turn that TV off. And then a little entryway, the table, just to hang all your coats. That's our little Valdez KOA campground chalet. I think there's only one like this. There are some mini cabins, campgrounds, places for our RVs, but this was the only chalet. I think rain boots is what it calls for today. Wet. By the time we decided to come on this trip, there were like no hotel rooms left in town. So this was a good alternative. It was clean, slept well, had a bathroom. So <laughs> we're good. Another morning of lots of rain and fog made us grateful that we came in on a sunny, sunny day and then got a sunny day because we got to enjoy the mountains here. We got to enjoy Thompson Pass at sunset and then I got to go back up in the sunshine. So, can't see any of that now. Just fog and rain. <laughs> okay, we just had breakfast. Now Mark is in class. I think since it's so rainy today, the best thing to do is gonna go check out the museums learn a little bit more about the history of Valdez. I'm gonna go see what I can find out. Okay, first up I am down by the ferry terminal and this is the Valdez Museum. Go see what we can learn here. This museum is mostly dedicated to life right around the time of the 1964 earthquake that hit Alaska. On Good Friday, March 27, 1964, the largest earthquake ever to hit North America struck Alaska. The epicenter of this quake was a mere 45 miles west of Valdez and 14 miles under the Earth's crust. Initial shocks lasting over five minutes affected nearly all of the coastal communities in Alaska. The magnitude of this quake measured 8.4 to 8.6 on the Richter scale and was reported as a 9.2 moment magnitude. The massive shock waves ripped streets apart, damaged homes, and destroyed buildings in town. Two docks in town were completely destroyed. $15 million in damage was reported. They have a really good movie here that goes from Gold Rush period all the way through the earthquake and was really, really interesting. The earthquake triggered a huge submarine slide that caused millions of cubic yards of earth to slide into the Valdez Bay. Large earthquake damage and two waves 
caused additional damage, and 31 Valdivians, mostly children, lost their lives during the earthquake. The glacial land where the town was built liquefied in the quake because it was glacial silt, which is why so much damage occurred here. Due to the unstable conditions of the town, many residents were forced to live in roadhouses for a period of time. Help came from Fairbanks and from the Army Corps of Engineers, and the ground under Valdez was determined to be unstable and decided to move the location of Valdez to a new town site. The Army Corps of Engineers found a much more stable area about four miles away and decided that was where the new town would be built. It took about four years for the new Valdez to become home for the Valdez residents. Approximately 62 buildings were actually able to be moved from old Valdez to the new town site because they weren't damaged too badly. Everything else was destroyed and burned to the ground after everything was moved. Since that tragic day in 1964, Valdez has grown and flourished, and this museum was a great way to learn all about that. Whew, came back out. I learned so much in there. The movie that they have is fantastic. It went all the way from Gold Rush through 1964 earthquake and the city today. I learned so much. It's raining so hard. Left my raincoat in the car. Rookie move. I bought a ticket that allowed me to enter both of the museums here in Valdez, and so I headed to the second location. This location is more of a timeline of the history of Valdez. This starts with the native population who inhabited this area and then moves into the gold rush period of the late 1890s. Then we have the trappers cabins that were set up up in the mountains. Then we have the homes and businesses that decided to stay in Valdez and not leave for the gold rush, but instead set up residence here in Valdez. Then we move into more modern times, covering the making of the road to Valdez and the earthquake, the building up of new Valdez, and then the Alaska pipeline making its way to this area. And finally, the Exxon Valdez oil spill and cleanup efforts. It also covers the history of aviation in this part of Alaska and is such a great way to better understand this area's history. Well, that museum was fantastic. This one really moved you through the history of this area, starting with the Alaska Native people, then onto the gold rush, onto the, like the people that established the town with their businesses, then moving into the 1964 earthquake, the pipeline, and then the unfortunate Exxon Valdez oil spill. So you get to go like full circle, see what happened through beautiful display so highly recommend those the other one focused more on like the history of the earthquake and what happened around that time um, it's just an extension of this one I think they just had too much stuff so this one has a really good timeline through the history of this area man I love visiting these towns and learning their histories I visited them before but not with the perspective of wanting to learn and understand these places and that's just kind of been our goal since starting this youtube channel is to kind of immerse ourselves in the history more so and it's so cool to know and to understand like why these cities came to be and learn of their resilience just really cool let's go get mark our final stop of the trip So we are about four miles outside of town and this is where the original city would have been that has now washed away and was destroyed from the earthquake because of that liquefaction of the glacial silt here. This was not a good place to build, but you know, they'd been living here for since the 1900s. So it wasn't like it just disappeared in a day. The ground just couldn't survive such a big earthquake. And what really got destroyed was the port and the 
where the dock where the boats were coming in so they made the decision to move the town but you can drive through here and see some of the sites from the old buildings you know it's like jump through trail tile style oh yeah they made a tent city right here so this is where we're standing and they used to have this dock here but this is where they moved everything from and a lot of these buildings that did survive the earthquake are now back in the new town right here we have the foundation left over from the valdez post office so this is where the old dock would have been this is where most people that passed away were when the earthquake happened because the ground just disappeared the dock fell apart well friends we really enjoyed coming to valdez even in the rain it was such a fun adventure to learn more about this awesome historic city it's a very resilient city and a beautiful place to come visit hiking kayaking seeing bears glaciers thompson pass it just has so much to offer so if you ever get a chance to come to valdez highly recommend it great fishing right from shore for salmon here in the later part of the summer thank you so much for spending time with us we got a five and a half hour drive back to anchorage ahead of us we are so grateful for each and every one of you that spends time with us and we'll see you again real soon for more of this alaska life